and welcome to the sixth episode of That One Thing, A Word Can Change a Life. I first want to start off by thanking you for joining us today. My name is Karina Shafalo, and it is a pleasure to have you on this podcast. This podcast is brought to you by RMK Productions Network and Tend the Title Podcast Network. Through the power of story, our mission is to uplift through voice, inspire, share stories and experience using the framework of teaching, learning, and modeling. Our purpose is hope, helping people every day. All right, everybody. I hope everybody is having a great day today, whether you are starting or ending your day. I hope you guys have a great day. I want to thank you for joining us today because this can be a really interesting topic, and I love this topic, and you will see why in a second. But a word can change a life. So we use words all day long. From sundown to sunup, we profess most of our emotions through words. It's one of the most powerful, powerful things we have as humans that helps us connect with other humans. They can change your emotional state. They can change yourself. They can change somebody else in a very deep way. Like, let me, let me, you know, give an example right now. So if, let's say somebody comes up to you. You're not having a great morning. Okay. Somebody comes up to you and says, Karina, I love you. You can feel like absolute garbage before this, but that might redirect your thinking and might alter your day as a result. Compliments can truly change your internal state. And I want you guys to keep that in the back of your pocket while we talk about this. Your words can literally change your posture, your mood, and even, you know, anything throughout the day, your internal state. So <clears throat> when, I, when I go into this, I want you to ask yourself right now, what words are, am I saying to myself? And what words am I saying to other people? Am I motivating myself? Am I being a positive role model for myself? Am I being a positive role model for somebody else? Am I choosing the correct words to ask or tell them? So <clears throat> as words can be such a powerful source for positivity, they can also be used for destruction. So let me ask you a question. How would you feel like, okay, for example, if somebody were to come up to you and say, I hate you, someone you love and respect, how would you feel? Now, I'm not saying, what do you think about? Moreover, I'm saying, how would it affect you internally? Would you feel tight? Would you feel heavy inside? Would it be like one of those magician strap things around you and you can't get out? How would you feel? Now, let's say the opposite. Let's go back to that loved one. Uh, Karina, I love you. How would you feel? Would you be open, expand, light? You would feel a little loose, maybe a little joyful. So. Words can really shift your body and internal state in, in no, other, no other human capacity can do that to somebody else. So I'm going to give a quick example of what I mean by this. So I was at a basketball tryout <laughs> back when I was young. And back in those days, they were a pretty big deal. I mean, listen, you, you know, your basketball shoes were one thing, but your game was another. And a friend of mine turned to me. And she kept saying this one phrase, and I literally heard it the entire time we were at tryouts. We had a three-day, it was a three-day trial. So this was like on the second day. I kept hearing this. I'm hitting a wall. Karina, I'm hitting a wall. I'm hitting a wall. So I, I, I turned around. I was like, listen, like, let's just, I'm going to call her Sarah, for example, because I'm, I'm not going to give out names. <laughs> but I said, okay, how does it make you feel when you run into a wall? Like, how, how are you feeling right now? She's like, I'm so heavy. Like, gee, like, I just feel like I'm so heavy. My legs, my shoulders. I said, where do you feel the most? She said, my shoulders. It makes me not want to play. It makes me not want to do anything. I said, perfect. We figured out what is, you know, what your mind is kind of going towards, right? So if it feels heavy, right, and you feel like absolute crap, it's not going to make you want to play. If you keep telling yourself, I feel like I'm running into a wall, I feel like I have 20 pound bricks on my shoulders, it's going to weigh you down. It's going to make your mind, your mind is literally going to orchestrate what your body does. Okay. So then I told her this, I said, listen, like, listen, you got one more day in tryouts. It's going to be all right. Let's just figure out a way to change your mindset. And if you go back to a few episodes before this, you can learn a little bit more about mindset, but, but for right now, we're just choosing wording. So let me ask you something, Sarah, what are you passionate in? What do you, what do you want to do if you get on this team? You want to win a championship? You want to be the high scorer? 
do you want to start? And she kept mouthing all, all this stuff like, oh, well, you know, I really want to win a championship. I really want to start. I want to be the starting point guard. Da, 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 da. She told me all these positive things. And you could see her posture change. Like you could literally see her stand up straighter, look more confident and like kind of shrug it. And I'm like, you go girl. Like, what that? You know, but it changed her persona. It changed her literally her body language. And that changed her game. The rest of the time she was fine. And she made the team, everybody. She made the team. Okay. So just her thoughts gestured kind of the power of, you know, her emotional state and made her, you know, totally change her thinking. But that, that question right there, what do you want to do in the future if you get this? What are you grateful for right now? You have a chance to try out for this team. Not many people have a chance. Okay. And we were in the second day. So some people already got cut. All right, Sarah, like you're pretty good. But anyway, so <clears throat> I want you guys to write this down if you can. Your words are a window to your subconscious. So when somebody tells me something negative and it's about themselves, I can, I can see right through what they're thinking because you can say one thing. Okay. You could say, yeah, I'm the best, but inside you could be meaning another right? So your words are a window to your soul, your subconscious. Okay. So what you profess that point in the, the tip of the iceberg might not be the same for, uh, for the bottom there. If you guys get my analogy. So <clears throat> I want you to look into your own perspective here. And I want you to say to yourself, when was a time where I talked maybe a little negatively to myself? Okay. Maybe before a test, I don't understand this. I'm not, I didn't study. I, I don't know what's going on. How did you feel in that moment? Did you feel tight? Again, did you feel heavy? Did you feel like you were strapped in? Did you feel like you were constrained? So there's two different, uh, two things I want to differentiate here. So when I have to do something, and when I get to do something, I have to take this test on Tuesday. Do you have to take a test on Tuesday? Is there a gun to your head that you have to take this test on Tuesday? No, you can, you can skip it. You can take it another time. Now it will be hard to make up, but you have the choice to take that test. Not many people can say that they can take the test. Not many people are able to go to college. Not many people are able to even finish high school. Not many people had a ride to school today or not many people felt you know, well enough to take this test today. So do you have to do this test right now? Because when you say you have to do something, it's restricting. It's like, oh my God, like I have to get this done. Like, uh, right? Well, what if you switched it and said, how does it feel when I get to do something? I get to take this test today. Now it might not be the most you know, top thing on my list. Okay. But I get to do this. Right. So the difference is forced versus freeing. So when you say that I have to do this, right. It's hard to motivate yourself. I have to work out today. Is there a gun to your head that says that you have to work out today or take this test? Like you're putting more pressure on yourself, which is making you not motivated which makes you not want to do it, which ultimately makes you not do it as well or just not do it at all. But then again, let me go with this example. I get to work out today. This is a blessing that I can do squats today. I personally don't do, I don't like squats, but it's a blessing that I get to walk up the stairs sore. Do I enjoy it? Maybe not, but guess what? Maybe people in a wheelchair are able to experience that, right? My body works. That's a beautiful thing. I have to get out of bed at five in the morning. I have to get out of bed. Do you have to get out of the bed or can you skip? You don't have to get out of bed. You can skip that day. You can skip work. Now it might be a pain if you skip work, but you have the option. You always have the option. 100, I'm gonna get a little deep here. 150,000 people that were alive yesterday are not alive today. You get to get out of your bed. You get to go give hugs. Go give high fives, go get a delicious dinner, text a friend. You get to get out of bed, right? You don't have to get out of bed. You get to get out of bed. I'm going to go on with the work one. I have to go to work today. You know how many people got fired in the past week? You know how many people are on unemployment right now that can't make money and provide for themselves? 
I have to go to the mall and do returns. You get to go to the mall and do returns. You get to return clothes. You have the privilege to literally return what you bought. How many people can say that they can return what they bought? Some people only have the clothes on their back, right? What a freaking blessing that we get these privileges that, and, and listen, I am guilty of it myself. Sometimes I'm like, you know, I have to do this podcast and I'm really not, I got to be energetic on here. I got to do this, got to do that. And I'm going to be transparent with you guys. Sometimes I am just not in the right headspace. But then I think to myself, let me trace back to like the 1800s when we literally had to write letters to each other, put it on a boat and then ship it across the world to get to talk to somebody. I can sit here right now in a study room right now and legitimately reach a million people out there by just putting on this microphone and submitting it. How crazy is that? It's so effortless for me to do. So I'm not saying these things are easy. I'm not saying that, you know, picking up your kids from school is easy. I'm not saying that going to work is easy. You might hate your job right now, and that is okay. Well, it's really not okay, but it's, you know, you know what I mean? It's not easy. These things are not effortless, okay? They require work and shifting your mindset into a place of gratitude, okay? So yes, they require hustle. They require work. They require determination and a correct mindset. But what they really require is that last thing, shifting your mindset to a place of gratitude. Because ultimately that work will become less heavy and more effortless, okay? We live in a society right now where we want more and more and more. I know you guys have probably heard this before and you see it on social media a lot. People just have more. You literally like, my God, Sarah got a new jacket. I got to go grab that. You know, like everybody has more these days and they're just reaching for more. And that's a good thing in a way. But if you truly want to be happy, it's not about wanting what you have. It's about, I'm sorry. It's not about wanting what you want. It's about being grateful for what you have. Okay. So look back. And say to yourself, am I listening to this podcast on a phone right now? Damn, I am, I am so grateful that I have this phone, that I'm able to afford a plan, that I'm able to have Spotify, right? Or YouTube or whatever you're listening to this on. Because ultimately, if you truly want to be happy, it's not going to be material. It's not. You can have everything in the world, but you're always going to want more. So it's about ha- wanting what you already have. For example, I live in a happy home. I am destined to make that home the best it can be. I don't need a pool. I don't need a new car. I don't need any any of that. I'm going to focus on my home because that's what, one, I can make better, and two, I am grateful for. Relationships, for example. Do we, most relationships fail because we start looking for the bad in a person instead of the good parts of the person. What do they provide for me? What do they love about me? We start looking at the bad traits, what we don't like. And I, I, you know, I like to say, be free with your thinking. But ultimately, if you free yourself and just try to, you know, go in your own headspace, your brain, if it's on its own device, will go to the negative, always. It will always look for things that are wrong. It'll always try to critique. So we really have to try to be in a positive mindset at all times. It's hard. I'm telling you guys, it's hard. It's a rainy Monday. And do you really want to be like, I am grateful I can get out of bed? No. However, if we start to train ourselves, it'll become natural over time. And you you will be subconsciously thinking that. And your window, when people look in, is going to be all positive. Because remember, words are a window to our subconscious. So we have to be intentional and we have to bring gratitude into our environment every day. So guys, that is all I have for you today. I hope you took a a couple things from this and I hope you make yourself a more positive environment because ultimately that is how you're going to reach your goals. So I hope everybody has a great rest of your day. If you have any any questions, please reach out to me or any comments at Karina Shafalo on Instagram. I would love to hear from you. All right, everybody. Everybody, God bless. Have a good one.